Well, if you're a pet owner, you know how loving and just life enriching they can be. And you really never want to think about your pet getting a disease, getting sick, or, or dying at an early age. So when your pet does get sick, what do you do? Well, more than likely, you turn to traditional therapies, including taking your pet to the vet. Well, our next guest says there are some things that you can do at home before your dog or your cat even gets sick that can extend their life and their good health. This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this video, I'll be covering the more common dog and cat diseases, plus just some of the remedies you'll find in veterinary secrets. We'll be covering anal glands, allergies, coughing, urinary tract infections, fleas, acupressure for pain and arthritis, an acupressure point that you should know about for seizures, a homeopathic for vomiting and diarrhea, and a tea hotspot remedy. Anal gland problems and anal gland obstruction is a really common reason why dog owners are visiting the veterinarian. And, that, and that's something as well that, that you as a dog guardian can be pretty safely treating at home. And I just want to show you here, just give you a demonstration of how the, sort of the, the easiest way to safely express your dog's anal glands. So there's my finger here, my index finger pointing in, and I'm using my index finger inside his anus, and I'm squeezing with my index between my thumb and my forefinger here. I'm, I'm squeezing that, and I can feel a little bulge in there. Here, and here I'm running it back and forth, and this is at the, and this is the left side, so I'm feeling the left anal gland. And I would just give it a slight squeeze, his tail up, I'll just have this paper here. Likewise, his left side, you can try it in your own dog. Just put your forefinger inside their anus, um, sort of move it back and forth. You'll feel a little bulge or a little bloom. Likely, to, likely if you feel that, what you're feeling is the anal gland. I give a, a firm squeeze. There it is. Is your dog chronically scratching? It's probably this, and here's what you need to do about it. Well, and the biggest one is called atopy. Um, we used to call it inhalant allergy or inhal in inhaled allergies. But now the belief is these allergens are absorbed in the skin. It's not actually from what the dogs are inhaling. It's what the allergens fall onto their skin and get absorbed through the skin. So one of the symptoms, if you've got an allergic pet, you know it. This chronic scat scratching, hair loss, a bad smell, recurring ear infections. Often there's paw licking, anal licking. Redness, especially common in the groin. As it goes on and on, you can see secondary thickening and blackening of the skin. And here's a dog with some fairly serious allergy. You can see the, the image here with the very red pustules, raised red, very itchy skin. Any dog can develop it. Um, there are certain breeds that are predisposed, such as terriers and retrievers. There's a very really complex mechanism that causes it, which involves things like cytokines and T-cells. But the point here is that they're actually secreting an antibody called IgE. Normally antibodies are there to protect, but not an allergy. So you've got this antibody, the, body, the immune system thinks it's something it's got to fight, so it secretes an antibody. But then what happens is that antibody binds with the allergen, for instance, such as the grass pollen, and that causes cells in, this, in the skin, such as mast cells, to release inflammatory components, a real common one being an, a histamine, um, which causes the itchiness. And that's why antihistamines work. You know, they decrease the histamine production or the effect of the histamine on the skin. Turmeric, one of the big key remedies you should be considering. Major ingredient of curry. At higher levels, it stimulates the adrenal glands to secret cortisone. That's the body's natural cortisol. The standard oral dose of curcumin, 250 to 400 milligrams three times a day. Um, I think it follow, and I'll just finish that up. So the big point here, and the range, there is a varying range. My sort of average dose is 100 milligram of the 95% curcuminoids per 10 pounds given daily. And so dose that based on the weight of your dog. Licorice root has been used for centuries to treat inflammatory and viral diseases. There's an image of licorice root here. It works well for chronic conditions such as contact dermatitis, um, some of the human conditions like psoriasis, and just the conditions we think of in allergy, inflammation and pruritus or itchiness. It can be used as a compress by preparing 3 grams of the extract in 150 mils of water. It can also be given as the powdered root form in a var varying doses, one to four grams per day. 
and they can also be given as a fluid extract form. One teaspoon before meals, or and as a solid extract, a half a teaspoon before meals. How to treat your dog's ear infection. And here is my dog Jesse. He's I've got him lying comfortably on a table. I suggest you have your dog lying on the ground. You're sitting on a table. And we're assuming that we're cleaning his left ear here. So I just lift up his ear here, and you actually see it exposed. And there's the opening of his ear down into his ear canals. And what I've got here is a 50-50 mixture, 50% water, 50% vinegar. I'm just going to mix it up, I shake it up so it's well mixed, and then I'm going to put a small amount, approximately one or two teaspoons, squirting it into his ear. So I open up his ear here, seat this bottle firmly down into the ear canal, then I just give it a little bit of a squirt so I can hear the fluid filling up his ear. Then I grab with the base of his ear, so I'm grabbing with my thumb and my forefinger. The oil there gives you, I'm squishing his ear, you may be here, it's squishing it. So what we're doing is we're working that fluid down into the ear canal. So I, I do that for about 15 seconds, make sure it's well worked in. Then I've got myself some 4x4 gauze, you can also use a cotton ball. And I'm going to use my, my finger, my, my and work my work at the cotton ball into his ear canal, wipe the excess debris out. If your dog is coughing, use this remedy. The last remedy I want to discuss for naturally treating your dog's cough at home is by making a natural cough syrup. So what I do and what I would advise you doing um, is picking up some honey, preferably a, a bit of a darker honey. Um, here I've got some concentrated lemon juice and a little bit of warm water. So all I'm doing is I'm taking through one tablespoon for 20 or 30 pounds of dog. So I'm going to put a tablespoon of honey into some of this warm water, which I've got here. I'll take, because it's just one tablespoon, I'm going to take a half a teaspoon, a little bit more than that, of lemon juice. So it's about a half a teaspoon of lemon juice, a tablespoon of honey, or you can double that recipe for a larger dog. Mix that up with some warm water. So there you've got it nice and concentrated. Wonderful cough remedy. I use it on myself, my kids as well. Mix it up so the honey is fully diluted. <clears throat> the honey itself has a whole host of wonderful antibacterial, antiviral properties, as well as being especially soothing, soothing to the throat. I'm just going to draw some of that up here in a syringe with this warm water. And we're just going to give Jess, Jesse a little treatment of it. Oh, Jesse. Mm. So there it is. Lemon and honey and warm water is a natural cough treatment. The first thing you should be using for urinary tract problems with your cat is vitamin C. You may never have thought of it. Um, pretty typically, it comes in some pretty big, big, difficult, chewable tablets for cats, but it's also available in a liquid form. So here is a liquid. Here is a liquid vitamin C again, um, and we just need a really small dose for a cat. We're dealing with 100 milligrams for your standard 10-pound cat, given once a day. Um, and what I want to do here is do a little sample with mischief, just to show that you can give it to your cat. Her faithful mischief who's gonna show you how she'll take vitamin C. So you can do it. The second very safe natural remedy that you can be using for your cat um, who has a urinary tract infection is a homeopathic. There's one called Cantharis, um, very safe, um, specifically effective when you've got a really inflamed, irritated bladder. You want to give your cat some relief. I mean, the other really good thing about it, it's not going to do any harm. Um, and what I want to show you here, here, here's a sample. It's difficult to read it, but there it is. It's Cantharis. Um, just available just about every natural health food store. Um, and what I'd be doing, I would be giving Mischief, and most cats, two of the 30C capsules. Here it is. She saw me coming. Here's two of them. I just plop them into her mouth. And I just encourage her to swallow. 
I'd be giving her two of those 30C capsules um, three or four times a day when she, when she had a really irritated bladder. The last remedy I want to talk to you about is a herbal combination. Um, here's one called Uri Harmony. Um, the three specific herbs I want you to look for is hydrangea, stone root and gravel. Um, and you be getting this as a capsule form in all likelihood. Um, and, the, and as you can see here, um, maybe it's difficult for you to see, but these are pretty big capsules. And they're not ones you're going to easily get down your cat. But then what I would do is dissolve that capsule in some water, which I've done over here for you. Here it is, just mixed up. Um, and a pretty typical dose, 0.2 of a mil um, for five pounds. So for mischief, she'd get about half a mil, not very much of it. There it is here, half a mil twice a day. I've already given her two things, so I'll give her a rest today. But I'd be doing that somewhere between five to seven days. How to holistically treat fleas at home. There's the little critters we all know so much about. First of all, just going back to the flea shampoos, there's a number of very effective natural holistic shampoos. One look at having one combined with oatmeal. It helps to soothe a very irritated skin. Use cool water, make a big point that you leave it on for at least 10 minutes to be effective. You can safely do it twice a week. Um, some of the holistic flea shampoos that work well, there's one I have used more often frequently called Vets Best. It's got a small amount of essential oil, peppermint oil, and clove extract. Seed oil spray, it's, it's a very safe, non-toxic, has been working well against fleas. And the one caution I wanted to add here is just be cautious in spraying any type of essential oil on small dogs or cats. You just want to lightly mist them, use a flea comb to spread the spray around. And Triple Sure Natural Flea and Tick Spray, made by Natural Wonder Products, is one cedarwood oil spray that I've used and had some good luck with. Borax, another home treatment for flea infestations. It can be used just gently sprinkling on your pet, combing it through them with a flea comb. And also can be poured in the cracks and crevices in your house. Getting the humidity out of your house. You know, flea eggs, they need substantial humi humidity to, to hatch, 75%. The larvae need 50% to survive. So when you've got low humidity, you know, less than 5% of the eggs survive. So a simple way is having a dehumidifier. Dish soap, you, we used to do this for the little kittens that would come into the shelter covered with fleas. Works great. You just lather them up with a small amount of soap. Leave it on for, as if you can hand, time it for a full 10 minutes, rinse it off, and you'll see the fleas just drop off. And here's the directions here, lathering up. In this, in this slide, I'm suggesting 15 minutes. At least time yourself, at least 10. And rinse it well so they're not left with that, that shampoo, that's, or that dish soap that's drying out their skin. And re I'm suggesting repeating it once a week in combination with flea control in your house. In other words, using something like the borax and the cracks and crevices. Now you're talking about some things that we can do at home to take care of our pets. I got to tell you that you know there are going to be people who are going to be skeptical. Right? right, so I think a really important thing is that we show some stuff here today. Let's do it. All right, and we do have a second guest <laughs> that right. we're going to bring out now, Vulcan. Right. Well, come on out, Vulcan, because I think Hi, this is Vulcan. a great way. Hey, Vulcan, a great way for Hi. people to actually see what it is you're talking about. Come on, boy. Hi, He's Vulcan. a sweet dog, So the too. first thing we want to show today is, is a technique called acupressure. Okay. Where, what, what Which I've do. heard about for humans, but not right. necessarily for, right. for so, dogs. So what I want to show is as a couple points to press, there's one here. So we're just dealing on, the, on his hawk. This mm -hmm. is his back leg mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And you can use your thumb and your forefinger. Right. Uh, good boy, Vulcan. And what I'll use is my thumb mm -hmm. around his back leg, and I'm going to hold this area, this, this mm -hmm. webbing mm -hmm. in it, over his hawk. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold that for 30 to 60 seconds and I and if he had arthritis in his back leg I would hold that do that do this twice a day for 30 to 60 seconds and you know there are so many other um, things that can help I know there's something else that you were talking about earlier that I thought was very very interesting. that's right so either for for epilepsy or all of a sudden your dog or your cat stops breathing like cardiac arrest kind that's of right thing? and wow. there's a point here right on Vulcan. he wants to go, play with you good boy Vulcan I put my finger right here right yep. between his nostrils right right above his upper lip yeah and I'd hold that point for 30 
30 to 60 seconds in case of if he was seizuring or if he'd stop breathing. All right. So we've got that. And then what are some other preventative things people can do at home? Because let me tell you, pets have a lot. They have you know, a lot of vomiting, a lot they of do, just, for sure. you know what I mean? There are so many There's things. One thing I wanted to show you that's fairly easy here. Yeah. I actually have a cup of tea here. Mm -hmm. And one real common remedy, a lot of dogs will get a thing called hot spots where their skin gets infected. Often it's from, Bye -bye, uh, often it's from swimming. <laughs> and what I would do from is... From swimming, you said? Yeah, where their, their skin gets wet. It, gotcha. it doesn't have okay. a chance to dry up. It gets a surface infection. You could spend you know, three to $500 at your veterinarian having it treated. Or else what you could do is take an aspirin drop it here in this cup of tea that I've been drinking, this cup of black tea. A regular tea. aspirin. That's right, a regular okay. uncoated aspirin, drop it in a cup of, str of strong black tea, mm -hmm. and I would just use, I've got a gauze, use a damp cloth, and I would just wipe it on the uh, affected area, so the hot spot, and I w I'd wipe that, wipe this all over it, and I do that three or four times a day, mm -hmm. often. And what, what that will do, it'll dry up the hot spot. That's mm -hmm, what the tea mm -hmm, does. Mm -hmm. And the aspirin acts as an anti-inflammatory. It works really well. There's a the homeopathic called arsenicum, or ars arsenicum album. Mm -hmm. And vomiting and diarrhea, so very common, most of our dogs and our cats, works great. I give one of these little capsules. There, I show you them right here. I'd, I would give one of these for a, a cat, two or three to a dog like Vulcan. I mm -hmm. give that three or four times a day for vomiting or diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Works really well. Thank you for watching this video. Veterinary Secrets is being released Monday, August 4th, and I'm including seven extremely valuable bonuses to encourage you to purchase it during that week. Thanks again. This is Dr. Andrew Jones.